Hello, and welcome uh, back to Cactus Arcade's Halo while we talk about cartoons. Um, so, I am Casey. I'm about to die. And I know what we're going to do today. I Casey just, just dabbed. I just did a dab. Dab on him. Uh, let's get a, Finne a picture of Phineas dabbing in on here, editor. Please. Get a picture of Phineas looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> And then poorly edited to make him down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so um, Valhalla. Yeah. Do you know how it works in Norse mythology? It's if you die in battle, Valkyries come down and take you to it. Right, but like do you a, know what it is? Like a party. Well, it's a, it's Odin's hall. He's preparing because if you die in battle, you go there, and Odin's preparing you for Ragnarok. Yeah. And. So, how does that work in, how, they say Valhalla is like a place in the Marvel Universe, but is it, it's not Odin's Hall, it can't be, so how does it work? Like, brain, what is the, and Valhalla's not the only Underlife, like, Frigga has her own, um, uh, afterlife, there's Hell, there's all these other afterlifes, where do people, what is the real afterlife of the Marvel Universe? What is it? God damn it. Damn it, Graham. It's the shawarma place. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the shawarma place for eternity. Do you think Phineas and Ferb died in the snap? <laughs> I mean... One of them must have. Yeah, one of them must have. Chances are one of them did. Um, r real question. Okay, real people... Have we done the real my real people in the, that exist in the MCU who died in the snap? Um, well, speculation. No. Okay, so Elon Musk. Yes or no? Did he die? <laughs> I mean, we can't really predict because it's random. I know. Well, then, okay, so this is, the, uh, this is the other thing I don't understand. If it's random and random people die, how can Thanos know? Like, because he said he wants it to be, like, rich and poor alike. But if it's completely random, statistically speaking, somewhere it'll be, like, only poor people to die and somewhere else it'll be only rich people to die. Statistically speaking, if it's completely random. And, like, if it's completely random, how come, vet, uh, like, only the OG Avengers survive? Yeah. That's very statistically unlikely. It is. Obviously, it seems that Tony was exempt from the snap, because Thanos, like, traded, or Tony, or, what, what's his name? Benedict Cumdumpster. Um, uh, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange traded Tony's life for the Time Stone. So I'm assuming Tony couldn't have died. The other thing, and I think I've said this before, Tony, Tony's vision in Age of Ultron. Yeah. None of those people who die in that vision died in the end of Infinity War. Also, why, um, why did Tony think, oh, this is real? Like, Scarlet Witch was just messing with his head. Yeah. I was like... I mean, people I, just assume that that's a real vision. I like, take it, it. It's sort of like the same thing. Like they had to like find a way for Thor to have to learn about the Infinity Stones. So it was like, oh no, my vision was real. I'm like, okay. I take it that um, it's just a manifestation of what a real possibility is to Tony. That's kind of what I thought. Because it it seems like it's different for everyone. Like obviously Tony's isn't real because that's not what happens. But Thor's is, but not really, because, I mean, Ragnarok happens, but not, not at all the way it happens in the Vision. No. Um, the, um, Caps is just, like, Caps is just what he wished could happen, or some, like, fear thing. Natasha's is her past, and yeah, it, Tony's is just what he's afraid of. It's, I don't know, it's weird. Ah, another bridge! Come on. How many bridges have there fucking been? They all this look is, the same. This is like the second one, and it's like, okay, this is fine. Just give me a fucking health pack. No, fuck you, Graham. Like, I'm supposed to do all of this. I have no grenades left, so I can't clear a path using that. Like, there's, there's just another bridge right next to it full of enemies that have to shoot me. I'm like, come on. <laughs> like, he, he, here's, here's the thing about game design that I really hate. I hate when people misunderstand that frustrating means difficult. Mm -hmm. Like, Dark Souls can be frustrating, but at the same time, it's not 
really doing anything unfair. It gives you everything you need to succeed. It doesn't. Like, for the most part. For the for the for for the most part, it, it's about you overcoming it. Uh, but there are just so many games who are just let's just throw everything at the wall and have you mash your head against the wall for an hour. Mm. Like that's not fun. Like. I like I know like challenge is is important. I'm not saying like everything should be a cakewalk, but there ha there's a balance between making a game that's fun that like you can have fun in you should have fun conquering the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, like Dark Souls has one of the most satisfying combat uh, systems out there. Well, in Dark Souls, every time you win, you feel like you earned it. Yes. There are times in other games where I just feel like, yeah, I got lucky that time. And yeah. actually just managed to scrape by. Or, God forbid, you play Skyrim and you just lower the difficulty. Yeah. And Skyrim is like one of the worst in terms of that. Because yeah. the game is heavily unbalanced. Like... The easiest, the, the the best way to approach combat is the game in the game is to become a stealth archer because yeah. both are so broken. Uh, oh here's a fun story about me. I have yet to actually play Skyrim as a stealth archer. What do you do? Kill I, yourself? No, I use may I, I try to balance between using like magic and swords and shields. I don't use. I use um like healing magic. Um, it's been a while since I played it. Yeah. But. Healing magic, swords, and shields and stuff, but like, there, it comes to a point where you're like, okay, I gotta take this in with like the stealth and the archery because the archery is just so effective. Um, yeah, the archery, ar just archery in itself is just also very satisfying. Yeah. That's also how I, I usually use archery a lot to defeat the dragons. Yeah. Because it's, it's they, safer they, they, than they, getting they close to them. They have to have given me a health pack somewhere. Like, I refuse to believe that player just like this yeah ain't, go ain't pussy mode graham go on uh, um yeah what were we talking about we were talking about games and difficulty yeah it's like another thing like i not too long ago finished legend of zelda the minish cap on my 3ds because uh, i got the i have the ambassador program mm -hmm. um really great game the ending is like, to get to the final boss is bullshit, because uh, you're like, oh, uh, if the bell rings three times, uh, Lady Zelda dies. You're like, okay, you, you have to go through three chambers. When you get through the first one, the bell tolls. Get through the second one, the bell tolls. And then in the third chamber, uh, you have to fight three of the hardest enemies in the entire like game mm -hmm. at once. And you have a time limit, because if the bell tolls again, you're fucked. And it's like, that's... That's not fun. Like I, I know like you're supposed to be like, oh, the stakes here are, are here, but after you do it for like the tenth time, you're like, uh, it, it, it just doesn't convey the emotion that it's supposed to convey. That yeah, I've never played Minish Cap, but usually the Zelda games balance the difficulty fairly well. I think. Yeah. Uh, the best one is obviously Breath of the Wild. Yes. Which ba balances uh, the difficulty that, very well. Kind of like. Fighting in, in Breath of the Wild, the fact that it's not really based off of, like, oh, can you repeat this pattern three times? Every fight feels like a fight. Have you done... Do you have the DLC? I, I don't have the DLC. Oh I, I beat the Champion Trials. Wait, uh, what? The, the Champions Ballad, I beat that. So you do have the DLC? Yes. I, I just said I had the DLC. Oh, I thought you said you didn't have the DLC. The Champion uh, Trials are good, uh, but the better, the Master Trials... Holy shit. I know. Have you played it? I, I, I've tried you to. you tried? Oh my god. I did it. I- oh. It's fucking hard. But it's so good. Um... How- have you beaten any of them? Or- Cause there's like the uh, first one, the second one, and the last one? I- Not really. Uh... Um... I have to get back and back for a while. The- the last one is like... They, they get progressively harder. So the first one is just like, you know, standard. It's pretty much just Evan, Eventide Isle 2.0. Um, and then the second one, if I'm trying to remember this correctly. Just go. All I need is 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 go. Come on. It, it brings in more of the challenge and like. Um, 
What am I supposed to do? I can't beat all of them because I die. Uh, the one thing I, the, the best one is the last one because it brings in because you know Evans Hyde Island because you you've done that one I, right I've done that yeah um, that one like it's like it's basically with the Master Trust so basically that again except like they occasionally give you more stuff like in those break rest rooms um, but Evans Hyde Island doesn't really play around with the environmental stuff like yeah. you know the hot and the cold and stuff and the rain the lightning. Uh, the last area of the Master Trial does, and it's fucking intense. Yeah. And uh, the game doesn't prepare you for it. You get um, the the best of the be at the very like the the very last environment is cold, but it doesn't give you anything to warm yourself with except a weapon. So you have to you you have to keep the weapon on you, but you can't break it, or else you you get no way to warm yourself except going to fires. Oh my god. Yeah, that sounds cool. Like that yeah, that, that that's cool. Like and also their trials are supposed trials. to be testing like completely optional. But putting like oh uh this really, really like insanely difficult challenge in a story like that's Well and the the part of the thing the reason it works with Dark Souls and um, Breath of the Wild too is there is there is um you, there are multiple paths you can take to finishing the story. Yeah. You like um, you don't like have to go through Blight Town. You don't have to go through um, the Painted World very famous. You can just skip entirely um, certain things like that. And then you know Breath of the Wild, you can literally just run to the final boss after the yeah. plateau if you want. Uh, that would suck, but you can do it. Um, so it, you, you can be like different amounts of prepared and you can also like find your own play style and if something, something is too hard for you, you can come back and hopefully it'll be easier. Um, but in games with like a more linear progression where they just throw shit at you, yeah. once you, if you can't do it, you're like, well, I'm shit, I'm out of luck now. Yeah, like, like, like here I'm, like I don't know what to do because I don't have the health needed to properly play this as it's meant to. They didn't give me anything. Like, I... Ugh. It's, it, it just sucks, because, like, any momentum that I have through going through this level is just stuck on this. So you're a pussy. That's what I'm getting from this. You're a little pussy bitch! Oh, I'm kidding. I'm just yanking your chain, as they say, in... No one says it, but you know, you know. It's a good joke. Good joke. Thanos did nothing wrong. Some people believe that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like I can get like jokingly going going with it, but he's insane. Like, and it doesn't he he doesn't act like and a lot of his band doesn't really act insane, which mm -hmm. is I think is like a joke. He doesn't like do like an evil laugh or any or anything. But he's crazy. It's almost like, um, I don't even want to call it, like, crazy. It's more like, um, you know how, like, the, the idea, like, how, like, someone could be actually socialized into committing something, like, yeah. awful, where they, like, they, they just really believe that they're right, but they don't really have a mental illness. They've just been, like, it's been, like, b beaten into them that they, that this is the right thing to do. I feel like that's what Thanos is. Yeah. Like, he's not, like, a insane joker type crazy he's more of like a this, this is what needs to be done because i've been almost been taught this or something like that um i, I still wish um i don't know because i feel like that i wish we got more of him figuring out why he needs the infinity gauntlet because i feel like it's just a messier way of doing what he was doing yeah um I feel like it worked better on like Gamora's planet, where they they pick the people at random so that they can tr like they can do it like in a effective way that doesn't harm the people that are now alive, other than like psychological trauma. Yeah. Because we see like planes crashing and stuff in in the mid credit scene or the yeah. end credit scene, and it's like more people died than just half, like a lot more. Like parents lost their families or like. Like, parents lost their kids, and they definitely killed themselves over that. Kids definitely lost their parents and starved to death or something. People died in the street, 
They died driving cars. People died in car crashes. They died in plane crashes. Um, hello? The stock market? What, what? How do you think Thanos affected the stock market? Jesus Christ. All Hold. the stockholders. I'm buying stock in Thanos. What happened to Tony's stocks? Did they, like, plummet? What yeah. happened to Disney's stocks? That, that'd be great. Uh, like, oh, um, I'm going to buy stock in this like person's company because they sell me. Or, oh, the person sailed this, failed to stop the bank. I'm going to sell all my stocks in their business. What if, what if, <laughs> like, n no one's ever really done a story where people, like, buy stocks in the superhero. No. Has there ever been a story where people, like, there's, like, someone tries to do, like, a pump and dump scheme or something with Stark Industries? <laughs> Tony tries to do a hostile takeover of another company. Here we go. Thanos buys stock in a bunch of companies, then does the snap. Or, no, he, he does the snap so that he can buy a bunch of stock at a really low price. And then yeah. he unsnaps to bring the prices back up and then sells it all at a profit and buys a nice house in the Bahamas. That's what Thanos' motivation should be. Stop spoiling. This is, this is what happens in Endgame. He, he, he buys a bunch of stock, snaps it back, and, you know, gets arrested by the, the FBI for, for, the, for things that aren't even illegal because it's not possible. Time travel isn't technically illegal. Have you ever thought about that? If I, like, go back in time and stop the Kennedy assassination, I can't get arrested for it. I can't... What if I go back in time and kill another president? Can I get arrested for that? If you get caught by the... The time agents? Fine. Like, I'm trying everything. Have you heard the theory that, um... The time travel is gonna make Kang get upset with the Avengers or something? I... I could definitely see King the Conqueror being something. Like, he, he was also another really good aspect of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, because yeah. he, he was like, hey, from where I come from, something Captain America does fucks the world over, so... Doesn't it end up being Scroll Captain America or something? Maybe, and I don't... I... I don't think I... I, I, I can't remember, like, what, uh, what's happening with that, but... You know what a really good Marvel game? The Lego Marvel game. Oh uh, yeah, really I've, heard, I've heard good things about them. Um, what time are we at? Uh, we're at like 17 minutes. Okay. Um, so, I think that what what um, what do you what do you think they should do going forward after Endgame? Uh, Let's just assume for the sake of find argument. A, find a way to incorporate the X Men. Uh, hopefully they can keep some of the like, same actors because I just really I don't want want to have to have them find like because James McAvoy and um, Michael Fassbender are both really good in their respective mm -hmm. roles. Um, even if they, even if they could get back Patrick Stewart or Ian McCallum, I'd be I'd be happy with that because mm -hmm. um, I don't that, those are like the two just like, they are those characters. like. Practically those characters, yeah. so like in a way, like the same way Hugh Jackman was Wolverine. I want them to incorporate TV shows into the storytelling. More. Yes, I, like make the TV shows matter. So, well, not only that, but I feel like the, make the, the TV shows about important characters too. Because I yes. feel like um, the biggest difference between the comic storytelling and the movie storytelling is that the comics still get more time. Yeah. Something, something that bug, bugs me about the Winter Soldier is that because they don't have enough time to flesh it out like as much because they have a lot of other things to deal with, they gloss over a lot of the best stuff from the comic. Like The comic has a whole issue that goes into how everything went down with them finding Bucky and turning him into the Winter Soldier, yeah. which is not in the movie at all. There's also um, Steve initially refusing to believe that it actually is Bucky and that it's like some sort of trick that's being pulled on him. Yeah. That's not in the movie at all. Um, Steve having like dreams about the past where he's like in my dreams it's still 1944 that's not in the movie at all but if they if they did this in a longer story form yeah they would have time to explore all this stuff that ends up getting glossed over and I feel like um, the only character they've truly successfully gone in depth with it's like to a level that satisfies me personally is Iron Man yeah I feel like 
Cat doesn't get enough exploration. No. Nope. Thor doesn't get enough exploration. Banner gets fucking nothing. He gets like less and less as the movies go on. Uh, nothing for Natasha. And nothing for Clint. Clint is like completely a different character in the movies than he is in the comics yeah. at this point. Uh, because he doesn't have a family in the comics. That's just something that Joss Whedon came up with. He was like, uh, we need regular man to be Avengers. Even though Clint is just like a sad, lonely guy who, who yeah. breaks his PlayStation and calls Tony to get it fixed. <laughs> That's something that happens. He he breaks his PlayStation and tries to re rewire it and it doesn't work, so he calls Tony. It's like, Tony, can you help? All right. We're going to wrap up here. Going to wrap up on that note. Yep. Uh, see you guys next time. See you next time.